Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. We've arrived at the Hall of the Mountain King. Time to head up here. A loop of decayed rope is coiled on the banister. Some rotted sections have been smoothed over with a fine dust. Broken computer monitors are heaped precariously among the rocks. A pet carrier for a cat or small dog has been left by the path. A calcified rag wadded in the corner may once have been a blanket. A hiking backpack leans against a rock. It's empty except for a dusty bag of cat food and a few punch cards. A pile of discarded electronics burns steadily in the center of the chamber. So Amy's over here. They're not going to say too much to us, however. A woman in a tattered cardigan looks furtively at the other people around the fire. And the reason they don't have much to say is because when I loaded back up, for some reason it loaded me, like, right here instead of back down at the truck. I thought maybe it was a problem and it accidentally loaded um, the old save file from the failed recording that I had which was ahead of where I left off before. So I spoke with Amy just to make sure whether it was an old save file or a correct save file. And it was the correct one, so it ended up going through the normal dialogue with Amy. So, well, at least it's the right save file, even if we did miss that conversation. Wasn't able to record it, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, there's many more people to talk with. And Amy is not particularly important. You'll see what I mean. The old man, however, is. Donald puffs on a smoldering pipe while half mumbling, half singing an old country tune. Softly, where the old green river runs through hills and caves not known to us, down to that sunless sea. Oh, who are you? Sorry, did we startle you? I might say you did. I thought you might be one of them. Oh, no, you can't be. We've been patching all their spy holes. We keep the lights dim and the motors running softly, and we route the smoke out through... out through... that is... what were we talking about? We're a bit lost, actually. Ah, you came from the road. The Zero. No, you should stay off that road. Not safe. Bizarre topology. You'll never get anywhere. It just brings you right back here. The bridge is out down there. Hmm. Yes. We're quite marooned in this moment. It's an interesting choice of words. Marooned in this moment. Not marooned at the moment, but in this moment. But I don't mind. Not anymore. This is where my life's work is. The computer. Right on the other side of the spire. It looks like a harmless old computer, doesn't it? Like some beat-up mainframe exhumed from a university basement and left in this cave to rot. Or to flower. No, it's no ordinary computer. I've modified it extensively. In some pretty experimental ways, believe you me. And that's to say nothing of the software, but... To Shannon. You look like a technically minded sort of person. Tell me. Do you know the effects of mold growth on diffuse base transistor circuitry? The 
mold would burn up. Exactly. It burns and, oh, the sweet smoke that issues from it. But it also leaves a sticky residue to seep through the machine, forming new connections and creating new circuits. The computer is no longer the pure domain of language or mathematics, but entropy. Thwarted and feeble, we hammer on this derelict keyboard. My name is Reason, King of Kings. But we are mere tourists in the ruins. Our keystrokes echo off into the tunnels, boundless and bare. The caves stretch far away. We are too late. Always too late. What? Did you say something? You were about to tell us about the software? Oh, the software! My life's work. Xanadu. You've heard of it. Perhaps you've read about it in a journal. It's been years since I published anything. Xanadu has evolved significantly since I explained its data structures in my article, Literary Multitudes, Hypertextual Narrative as Post-Structural Witness. Before I continue, I just want to mention that I've definitely heard the name Xanadu before in this game somewhere. I don't remember where. I didn't remember the last time I recorded, and I still don't remember now. But the name Xanadu is definitely familiar. Evolved, and then deteriorated. Donald sighs dramatically and takes a puff from his pipe. I'm afraid you're too late, fellow hypertext enthusiast. As the mold accumulated on the circuitry, Xanadu blossomed for a moment into something holy and enchanted. And then all the charm was broken. Do you have any idea what it's like to spend your life building something and then sit powerlessly as your work declines into ruin? I love that Conway, Shannon, and Ezra are all like, yeah, horrible stuff is happening, and Junebug's like, nah, not really. I drive deliveries for a small antique shop, and we're closing down. Ah, shuffling around the dusty ghosts of antiquity. Well, I have my own ghosts, and I keep them in there, in Xanadu. It's running on that glorious, dusty machine. Take a look if you'd like. Too late to do anything but smoke and reminisce anyway. Far too late to do anything. Andrew. So Andrew is just like Amy. They're one of many research scientists that worked on Xanadu. Do you know that when I first... No, I mean, if this cave were larger, could it... Ah, now I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, ah, I've got it. How would you characterize this space, the one we're standing in now? It's a mess. A catastrophe. Or the site of some ancient catastrophe, anyway. Sure, the evidence is all around us. I bet those tunnels are full of junk. We're surrounded by them. Look at that one, up there. Do you know what? Uh, no, let me explain to you what's in that tunnel. You won't be scared. Close your eyes. Will you close your eyes? Only if you close yours. Okay, okay, I can do it from memory. Good, now, you are standing at the top of a rocky peak. A tongue of flame licks the the shadowy anatomies of... Where are we? Oh, here again. How disappointing. It's like they were hoping that just speaking the words could take us somewhere else. What are all these computers for? Computers? Oh, now I remember. I was writing on them. I described a cave. That was my job. Describe the cave. There's a great history of caves in the literature, don't you know? The walls are frozen rivers of orange stone. Isn't that vivid? I had a lot to live up to. I was a grad student studying statistics when I started working with Donald on his project. He said we needed someone with a more analytical mind to do the descriptive writing. Someone who would appreciate the cave descriptions as real labor. 
instead of taking their authorial voice for granted. Donald warned me it would be long hours of typing painstakingly detailed descriptions into the computer. Not put in the hours, believe me. I've put in the hours. I've described every facet of this cave in such detail that sometimes I don't know if I'm reading or looking, writing or exploring. Often in the dark and lonely moments, I worry that in my sleep I've transcribed rooms from my dreams into the system. How would we know? They could only be entered with precise, faithful detail. That's all I know how to write, and all I dream about is caves. I only dream of caves. A massive gate constructed out of scavenged materials blocks passage down the far side of the spire. So we can walk a very big circle around this spire, around the burning center. Roberta, the kingdom is in peril. Roberta laughs. Well, what else is new? Do you work here? Work. You could call it that. I gather old circuit boards and throw them in the fire. Sometimes I fish out precious metals and let them cool into toxic gems. I put them in my hair. Enchanted jewelry. Talismans. A magic mirror that prevents the future. A magic shield that protects the bearer from age. A magic chest that's always filled with... I never went to the university. I was an independent scholar. It means I took to the public libraries like a beachcomber. I studied fairy tales. And then I came to work for Donald. I paid the bills, rubbed leathering elbows with academics, scraped black mold from cave walls. Finally, now I carry the firewood into senescence. I don't know what senescence means. The kingdom is in peril. So here's Xanadu. Baffling control panels are sheltered from the elements with a worn tarp. A closet-sized wall of knobs and wires looms behind the machine, humming faintly. An electric typewriter is the only easily recognizable component. How do you think we get it started? This old thing? Maybe there's a hand crank around. Oh, it has a run key. a bunch of nonsense right now. <laughs> this thing is in rough shape. Do these switches do anything? Conway flips an unlabeled switch. Okay, that's worse. Try typing help. That's it, Lula. Damn, I can't. 
can't tell what she's saying. Oh, I have my portable degausser with me. Old systems like this one can build up a remnant magnetic field that sort of warps everything along whatever pattern it's settled into, you know? The degausser clears it up by suddenly shaking the magnetic field around until it's uniform again. That's how I like to think of it anyway. Like shaking a snow globe. <laughs> Worth a shot. Well, okay. This is a lost cause. What a piece of junk. Man, that machine is so cool. And something I want to mention too is the art style of that like, uh, that like lined stuff, like glowing lined kind of wireframey sort of look. That's the same art style as Conway's new leg. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Bizarre. And what was that about Lula? Maybe Donald knows how to clear it up a bit. I love the look of this cave. So huge and cavernous. So, you've seen it for yourself. What's left of it? Pretty busted. The chalky bones of a beautiful dream. But you can see what it once was, can't you? Can't you? There was so much more to it. Ornate labyrinths of memory, exhaustively simulated parallel cave ecosystems, real artificial intelligence built on sophisticated neural network algorithms. The birds in the forest could flock in three dimensions. The bats could learn to sing. And then it began to crumble when the strangers came. At first, we only heard them, walking heavily through the caves, dragging things around, hammering and clattering their tools. Sometimes we heard working songs, never close enough to make out real voices, just their echoes cascading wordlessly in the tunnels. Then we caught a glimpse of one. What did they look like? They look like... No. It's too horrible. I shouldn't be telling you about this. They're dangerous. They're... strange. I should never have tried to outwit them. They were always too much for me. But it's too late now. If I'd listened to Lula, I... Lula? Lula Chamberlain? Yes, of course. Oh, do you know her? How do you know her? It was a long time ago. All this, you see, just... Look at it. No. She's gone now. She left. We built this together, did you know? Lula, Joseph, and I... Lula is gone from here, but Donald points across the cave with his pipe. Still in there, in Xanadu. I don't know where Lula is now or how to get there from here, or how to unwind that damn tangled highway, but Xanadu, before its ruin, was faultless as an oracle, a shrine to perfect simulation. Until... But maybe... Those weird interlopers destroyed my Xanadu. Perhaps they know how to fix it. It may be dangerous. I've sent many eager seconds to negotiate with them to repair my masterpiece. Back there, that tunnel. Push back the vines. 
Crawl out into the darkness. Watch your step. After a while, you'll feel the terrain change beneath your hands and knees, from rock to crystal, and then to mud. Then you'll be out. That's where the strangers come from. Now leave me alone. I still have a bit of mold in my pipe, and a few dreams left. Well, this can't be right. Looks like an old church. It's muddy. Yeah, that's what he said. Crystals and then mud. Okay. I want to stay outside. Okay. I'll stay with him. We can look for lizards. Okay, we'll make it quick. So while they go inside, we get to play as Ezra. Now, last time I spoke to Junebug when I played this before, so just for just for my own sake, uh, I'm gonna look at the headstones. An epitaph is engraved on the stone grave marker. Justin Corcoran, generous disposition, will be missed. Below the inscription, a note is written in white chalk. HD8191T, fill date June 29th, Notes of Almond. What? <laughs> what? K. Edward Lombard and J. Benjamin Holman, we think you two would really have liked each other. <laughs> Let's see. Field day, July 24th. Weird finish. It's like describing food. Oh, this is a Finnish name. Antti uh, Lukkonen. Antti Lukkonen. Oh, I said a far off look. Probably still does. Till date August 1st, aftertaste of rainwater. I get the feeling, I think these might be backers, because I'm pretty sure this game was on Kickstarter or some other crowdfunding thing. This feels like it might be backers or something. Find any lizards? I wasn't really looking. Nice cover story, kid. Do you have a family? Well, I've got Johnny, the weird vector. I've got you folks right now. Is that a family? Let's call it what it is. Junebug and the people she surrounds herself with. See? It means something. It makes a claim. It's specific. I want to be specific. I think you are. It's the middle of the night and... Here you are in a graveyard. Any other kid your age would be in bed. You've just got to make choices and own them. You think I was born this foxy? I came off the assembly line about a half foot shorter and all gray. No eyes. They were going to have us clearing out the old mine. Doesn't matter what you look like under all that rock and water. A bunch of gray shadows shoveling and hammering invisibly at the walls, draining the tunnels. So talking about this mine, I wonder if this could be the mine that we explored as Conway and Shannon. Johnny found some gear, an old tape player. We hid away in an underwater cave and listened to it over and over, and we knew we weren't miners. Could that be an old tape player left behind by the archivists? We slipped out onto the road, just these two featureless shadows, and ever since that night we've been detailing, coloring in, specifying. 
I feel more like myself every day. I feel more like myself when it's just me and Julian. Well, there. Now you're getting specific. There you are. What'd you find in there? It wasn't... Hey, what's going on? You look flushed, old man. It doesn't matter. Right, okay. We got what we need. Let's go. Yes, they really do not show you, at least at this point. And as far as I've played, they don't show you what the heck went on in that church. Oh, I want to know. Why do they seem so, like, flustered and weird and... Who are the strangers? Singing softly. Trace an orbit round the road and close your eyes with holy dread. For we on mold and whiskey fed and drank from rivers down below. We found your strangers. We know how to fix your damned machine, but I'm not sure it was worth it. I'm not sure it was worth it. Like, why Why does Shannon say that? Did something... Like, did they give something up by going into that church? Oh, soon the visions will return. What have you found? They say you need to type in a specific phrase to restore it. Oh. A bit of a poem to rally the illustrious spirit. Of course. Well then, type away. By all means, do not hesitate. Type away. Okay, I think I'm going to end this episode here because I know that the next bit coming up is pretty lengthy and I don't want to, like, stop in the middle of it. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when we return, we're going to type the special phrase into Xanadu.